what Nintendo game deserves a remake, Princess Peach's Walter Ego, and Grand Theft Auto 6 on a Nintendo console? It's the LP Podcast. Hello and happy Tuesday once more. Today's the day of the week where I, your host LP, talk about Nintendo news for the weeks. And, well, this week, starting off with a relatively interesting one. Fumahide Aoki, the character designer who originally brought us Waluigi, uh, revealed that he had also designed Wa Peach for 2004's Mario Power Tennis. And you can see her on the screen there as her concept art. Uh, as I understand it now as well, the dark parts of this character were indeed purple, making her for something of a Princess Plum, in my opinion, as opposed to Princess Peach. Obviously, this character was never released or actually officially integrated in any game, specifically not, of course, Mario Power Tennis. If we scroll down here in the article, you can see that several images of this Peach design or Wa Peach design were shared on his Instagram, and he even had some renders. If we click the link, no, he has since taken it down, it would seem. There was originally an image here of further renderings, and even more have been taken down. At the time being, all we have is this. Of course, other people have garnered the renderings, and it's by and large the same. I think this is interesting. It's something that I've always thought that, that Princess Peach deserved, right? You have the Wario for Mario, Waluigi for Luigi, and it would just make sense for this to you know be the natural next evolution and i'm curious as to why it was never actually fully acted upon uh perhaps the character design specifically just wasn't appealing enough to the superiors or they just didn't like the idea in general who's to say because clearly it hasn't been revisited yet since then but i guess that's something we'll have to think about and keep an eye on as time progresses and as time progresses, we move into the holiday season ever further. Nintendo Switch Online has added new holiday-themed freebies. Yes, more emblems. Look at this. You've got Mario with presents. How delightful. Even Pikmin Yoshi egg. Lots of fun. Continuing on, it was earlier in the week that Microsoft CFO said, Our mission is to bring our first-party experiences and our subscription services, aka Game Pass, to every screen that can play games. It didn't last long before people started to hypothesize that this also meant for PlayStation and Nintendo Switch. Now, uh, before we move on to the next point about this, and it'll kind of shed some light on the, uh, the truthfulness of that statement, Let's hypothesize. What would that even look like? I think, number one, that kind of tells you where Microsoft would be headed, you know, away from the hardware side of things. Um, because it's no secret that Microsoft and Sony, by and large, compete with each other more so than with Nintendo. And Microsoft, of course, being the tech giant they are, also has their, uh, well, more than their toes in the PC pool, all right? They got their whole gosh darn leg. Their body they're swimming in it okay <laughs> fully inundated in that so i know that this is maybe not as big of a bombshell as you would initially le be led to believe by reading that but i do think that that sort of transition is something that is in the back of leadership's mind over at microsoft now whether or not that it means that those games are going to be headed to switch i would seem that that's not true because if we fast forward about a couple days after that comment by the CFO, Phil Spencer, uh, another member of senior leadership, refuted that and says that, that that's not the case. Now, I hope, again, that it might it may yet still be the case because another thing that Phil Spencer had mentioned, and I didn't put up a slide for this, was that we hear your cries. Uh, specifically referring to the Banjo-Kazooie fan base clamoring for another installation. I, of course, being part of that fan base. Uh, obviously, Microsoft owns the rights to Rare and the IPs that they create. So hopefully, when that does happen, because it will happen, there will be another Banjo-Kazooie game. When that does happen, hopefully that is a game that does make itself to a Nintendo console. Because, selfishly, 
I only own Nintendo consoles. <laughs> but number two, I think it would be most successful on a Nintendo console too. Yes, we know that Nintendo consoles are not the most powerful creations out there in the gaming market today, nor have they ever been, at least not since, oh goodness gracious, a couple of decades ago. I think the GameCube was the last true competitor in the overall like high powered gaming hardware uh, corner of the market. But that being said, I don't think that Banjo-Kazooie is a game that would really require a whole lot of power anyways. But I do suppose they could push the boundaries. Anything's possible. Speaking of pushing the boundaries and requiring power, Grand Theft Auto 6 had a trailer leaked. Now, this trailer was originally supposed to be released today, in fact, but it was leaked. And while this doesn't necessarily pertain to Nintendo specifically, because goodness gracious, do we really expect Grand Theft Auto to come to a, a Nintendo console? Probably not. All right, certainly not Grand Theft Auto 6, but I do think that with Grand Theft Auto 6 being, you know, officially like teased, it's got a 2025 release date. I think that we may start to see Grand Theft Auto 5 come to a Nintendo console. We may yet see it on the next gen Nintendo console, you know, the, the Switch 2, for lack of a better word, but we'll see. Again, I'm not a huge proponent, shall I say, or someone who places a high level of importance on the, the, the hardware's specific functionality in terms of like a power perspective. Like that's not something that I really care about, all right? I played Mother 1 and loved my experience, all right? And that thing, <laughs> oh, hardly a, a graphical masterpiece. But speaking of graphics, right, and, and what is and isn't a masterpiece, apparently Batman Arkham Knight is unplayable due to those sort of reasons. If we read the first paragraph here, even though it's a pretty great game, Batman Arkham Knight has a very rough history when it comes to performance. It ran so badly on PC back at launch, the developer Rocksteady Solutions had to delist the title to fix the issues and apologize to fans for its release. Uh, fast forward eight years later, and it seems as though Rocksteady hasn't learned its lesson, as Arkham Knight is reportedly unplayable on the Nintendo Switch. Users cite FPS drops and uh, resolution dips, and we even have a clip here. We'll see if we can see what this guy has in mind. So you see here, uh, user Game Riot Army on X, formerly known as Twitter. To be honest with you, I'm not 100% certain what the issue is. But again, but again, but again, but again, I, I don't share those same uh, priorities when it comes to visual deliveries. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. If that's unplayable, then most of the games that I play are probably also unplayable. <laughs> uh, apparently it runs at a, an unreliable 30 frames per second, and that is, well, I guess not too completely terrible. Goodness gracious. But you know what else isn't terrible is the fact that this is week two in our holiday series. Last week, we talked a little bit about my experience with the Nintendo 64 and the holiday season surrounding that. This episode, we are going to move one generation in the future and talk about the GameCube, or rather my experience with it in that holiday season. So, I believe this was 2003, just after the GameCube's launch. Perhaps it was 2004, because I did not get the GameCube on launch. I got it a year later. Uh, this was a time period where I had a number of friends with their, you know, hands in different gaming niches, right? I had some friends who were, you know, very much hardcore Nintendo people. I had some friends who were very much hardcore PlayStation people. Uh, Xbox was very barely on the scene at this point, and I wasn't super familiar with it or even interested in it at the time at all either. But at this point in time, I actually was kind of equally interested in PlayStation and Nintendo, at least as, you know, my desires for Santa Claus manifested themselves. So I, I asked for both. I was like, hey, hey, Santa, dude, I'd like a, uh, you know, like a GameCube and a PlayStation 2 Santa, baby. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, and it, it was relayed to me through my parents that Santa apparently communicated with them. He's like, hey, man, we can only do one. <laughs> the elves are overworked. They're tired. All right, there's a lot of other kids in the world you can get. You can get one console, and I didn't. I didn't know what to choose, and that may seem sacrilegious to the more uh, ardent Nintendo fans of you, and I am definitely one of those now. But at this point in time, like I mentioned, I wasn't necessarily certain, because again, yeah, I had a lot of friends who wanted to play specific PlayStation games that didn't have a Nintendo port. And again, this was a time where GameCube and PlayStation games were were closer together 
in uh, in power, so you did get a lot more third-party titles that crossed over each different gaming system. But that being said, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, the choice still had to be made. So what I did instead is I left it to Santa's choice. I, I wrote back. I was like, "Thanks, you know, Saint Nick. Uh, I can't pick. So please, you do it for me." <laughs> and push, and push comes to shove. I mean, you could already guess which one I ended up getting. But still, the uh, the anticipation drove me wild for the weeks that followed uh, leading up to Christmas Day itself. And in fact, on Christmas Day, you know how I mentioned last week I did the whole, like, well, the weighing and the judging of the shape of the box holding the, uh, the N64, at least what I thought was the N64? Uh, there was no such box that made any sense for any console under the tree. So a little 10, 11-year-old LP was very upset, scared even, mystified to some degree, that maybe, in fact, Santa had just decided, you know what, you don't want to pick? No console. Until, of course, a certain small, well, relatively small, more like a, a small book. I thought I got another Captain Underpants novel, lo and behold, no. It was Super Mario Sunshine. Yes, indeed, the GameCube had been chosen, and it's all history since. Because, particularly speaking, Super Mario Sunshine is one of my favorite games of all time. And it's a fitting segue, too, because in the Discord channel, user Pikmin Pro asked a question in the Ask a Question channel. What game would I remake or have remade if I could so choose? And it's a very good question. A very difficult question to ask, too. One question that I would throw back onto you guys. Uh, what game would you like to see remade? Of course, it would we'd probably have to draw like a cutoff at some point. Uh, so let's say 2010 and earlier. Um, because goodness gracious, we're almost 15 years removed from that, so I think that's, uh, <laughs> acceptable enough. But, I chose Super Mario Sunshine. I mean, I, I, it was my first GameCube game, and what a great game it is, too. Granted, I haven't played it in quite a long time. I did play the Super Mario 3D All-Stars version, which is the footage you see here. Um, but still... It's it's an amazing game. It gets a lot of flack, right? It gets a lot of, uh, well, how do we put this? <laughs> Kindly, I'm trying to be I'm trying to be diplomatic here uh, because I don't necessarily agree with with some of the remarks that people have for it. So I suppose we'll just keep it positive and why I think it should be remade. I think that the the color scheme of it, the high saturated, right, the the, the bright theme that you experience here could really do with the uh, the slightly higher power of the Switch or of the Switch's successor versus the GameCube. I think that while, you know, the, the remaster for Super Mario 3D All-Stars did look great, it wasn't it wasn't a remake, you know what I'm saying? It's not made in the same vein as moving from uh, Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door from GameCube to the upcoming release, you know what I'm talking about? So I think that it could greatly stand to benefit there. I also think that it would also greatly stand to benefit from like a summer release you know what i'm saying obviously it's a very summery game sunshine being in the freaking name <laughs> and you spend uh 90 of the game spraying out water which is definitely not something you want to do in the winter so i think i think that that could be a great move to be honest with you again selfishly sure just because i love the game yes perhaps but again depending on how how much you want to actually change with a remaster or a remake of a game you could even look at adding in more nozzle types Super Mario Sunshine's a game I long thought deserved a sequel. Never ended up getting one, like a direct sequel of Mario Sunshine 2, but I would settle. I would settle for a true remaster, remake, rehashing of it. Goodness gracious, I think that we could certainly do a heck of a lot worse. Hmm. But that's going to be it. Very short one today. The news is not necessarily flowing in the later part of the year but things do stand to ramp up significantly in 2024 a number of things on the docket and we'll talk all about those in the weeks to follow however next week we will have a guest I'm not going to tell you who just yet but look forward to that so thank you again so much for watching i do appreciate it and hope that you enjoyed yourself and with that said i'll see you then